Welcome to the Two-Step Equation Solver. My name is Ashley and I'm one of the co-founders of csmmath.org. In this lesson today, we'll be able to take any two-step equation and solve for x by creating a program. So our very first step that you'll see in my program here that I've done is I have created a handful of variables here and I'll have you do the same. You'll click down here in variables and hit make a variable and you can type in these names and hit OK. So you'll need an A variable, B, C, C minus B. We can get rid of this variable. And we will have X as our last variable here. So as you look on my screen here, I'm going to move my picture. What I've done is I've come into the stage and I've made my backdrop as this following presentation here, which has my X, my plus and my equal using the paint tool. And I've got this piece on the bottom. So I've created this format here. The other thing that I did is once my variables were created, you'll notice on the left hand side here, if they're checked, they appear on the screen. So we want our A value, B value, C, and X to appear on the screen. And if you double click these variables, they change in their format. So I lined these up according to the variable that they will go with in the equation. So my A value goes before my X, my B is my constant, and my C is what my equation is equal to. And I put my X value on the bottom here. So to get started here with our code, the first thing typically that's nice to do is set our variables to an initial value. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set A to the value of A. So that's what shows on the screen. We'll set B to a value of B and C to a value of C. I'm going to actually set X to a question mark to start because we are not sure what this value is. So you'll notice as I start my program, A, B, and C are programmed as followed and a question mark at the end here. Now the next piece I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to ask my user what the values of A, B, and C are. So we'll ask what is the value of A and whatever they type in is going to be stored in this answer block. So we'll come down here and we'll set the value of A to the answer they type in. So notice if we tried this, the value of A will say is 3 and notice this variable changes here. So we're going to do this very same thing for the values of B and C. You can right hit and click duplicate and we can just change B and we'll get C as well. So at the point in the program that we're at, this program has asked for these three values, so now the program can solve for x. Great. All right, next step. We are, if we think about solving an equation like this, the first step is we need to get this b value to the other side. We're trying to get x by itself. So we're going to take c and we're going to subtract b as our very first step. So I created a variable for this, c minus b, and you created it at the start of your program. And we'll set this value to exactly as we stated here. We'll go to operators and we'll take the value of C that the user typed in and we'll subtract B. This gets my X value closer to being alone. Now from here we've got a ton of situations and we're going to look at these. This is really helpful to see in the student guide. So we'll see looking at these examples here we could have one solution, no solution, infinite solutions, or X is equal to zero. And we could really call X equal to zero and one solution probably the same thing. We can go either way. So we'll see a couple examples here of one solution equations and some observations that you can make together as a class is that when we take C and we subtract B in both of these equations it does not equal zero and A, our A value, is not equal to zero and these patterns result in a, an equation with one solution. A no solution equation results in a pattern of C minus B not being zero and our a value is zero. So we're taking a number that is not zero and we're dividing it by zero. And we cannot divide by zero, which results in a no solution. Infinite solutions. If we take c and we subtract b, we get zero. And we're dividing by our a value of zero here. And when x equals zero, we have c minus b equals zero. And we're dividing by something that is not zero. So we've got kind of four situations here. And this is where I would pause with your class and have them fill in this flowchart together. Um, this is a really good piece of computational thinking, setting up your kind of flow of your program before you jump in. 
So the first pattern we'll notice in all four of these situations is that c minus b equaled 0, or c minus b did not equal 0. Now if we stick on the left-hand side of this chart here, when c minus b equaled 0 and we had a equal to 0 as well, we were looking at a situation of here, infinite solutions. So you can have students fill in this flow chart together. Infinite solutions would lead to this branch right here. Okay, and then if we follow over, continuing to follow our patterns, looking at our table here, we'll find when c minus b equals 0 and a does not equal 0, we have a situation of x equals 0. Continuing over, when c minus b is not equal to 0 and a is equal to 0, we have no solution. And our last little wing here, we can think about if we've got, let's come back to our guide, a situation up here of one solution. We're going to take c and we're going to subtract b, so in this case we're left with 8. And then we have 4x equals 8, so we're going to take 8 and we're going to divide it by our value of 4 to get x by itself. So again, this is a fabulous piece to discover with your students. But we would take c minus b and we would take this value and we would divide it by the value of a to solve for x. So this is what our kind of flow chart looks like as we set up our program. And you'll see as well when you progress in the student guide, here's what students are asked to do next. So if we look at the code now and we come back to our flow chart, we had if c minus b equals 0, and we can follow down, and a equals 0. In this situation, we said we had infinite number of solutions. So that piece would come right in here. x has infinitely many solutions. Continuing the pattern. If c minus b equals 0, but a does not equal 0, we saw x was going to equal 0. And we could continue down filling this in. So this is the piece that really, really has some value doing with your students. So as we set up our code here, so we get a little bit tricky. We are going to start with some if-then-else blocks under here. Under control, we'll pull down an if then else. And then within this if then else, we're going to pull inside a another if then else up here. Okay, a nested loop. So we're going to start with the question of if our c minus b variable mm -hmm. Have an equal sign. If our c minus b variable equals 0, and if our a value equals 0, then this situation lends itself to x having infinite solutions. And we could see that within our flow chart that we created. Now if I read this code as well, we're saying if c minus b equals 0, but a does not equal 0, then we are setting our x value to 0. Continuing down with our flow chart here. If c minus b equals 0, now we're coming to the else part of this block, which means c minus b does not equal 0. We need another if-then-else block. And now we're going to say the same thing here. We're going to say, well, if c minus b does not equal 0, but a equals 0, we're going to say x has no solutions. However, if c minus b is not equal to 0, and a is also not equal to 0, we're going to come back to operators here. And we're going to take our c minus b value, as we stated, and we're going to divide this value by a to solve for x. And this is our entire program. So again, the key to this program is running 
this flow chart ahead of time with your students to think up all of these situations. That's where the computational thinking really comes in. Now it's always nice to check your program. So if we came back here to this one solution, we have 4x plus 3 equals 11. We would subtract 3 to give us 8. Divide by 4, we should get x equals 2. Let's try all this in our program and let's see if this works. So what is our value of a? 4. B is 3, C is 11, and we'll find here as this program solves, X does indeed equal 2. Now to really test the, um, the effect effectiveness of the program, it's important to solve for a no solution, infinite solution, a solution when X equals 0, and a solution like we just did, to be sure that your program works for all solutions. Thank you so much for watching, and best of luck creating this program with your students.